as Prince Harry exchanged one palace prison for another. Hello everyone, welcome back to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today we are going to be talking about Prince Harry and his kind of Montecito prison and how he kind of seemed to exchange one palace prison for another. Now, I don't know the inside details of what's going on in Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's life, but it really seems like Harry and Meghan are kind of aimless in Montecito. And I just got to wonder, did they exchange one palace for another? Did they exchange the, the opulence of Buckingham and Kensington Palace for Montecito instead? And so at the end of the day, even though Harry left and he said he's happier than ever and this is a life he really wanted, is he actually maybe somewhat miserable and just as trapped, if not more, in California than he ever was in the UK. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, hello, my name is Brittany, and we talk about everything related to royals. So that's news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. We will do it all right here, so if you wanna subscribe, that would be fantastic. And like I said, today we are talking about what really goes on in Montecito for Harry and Meghan, because honestly, I don't understand what they do all day. I really, really don't. They have, like, you know, they supposedly have these deals with Netflix and Spotify. Obviously, they do have these deals, but they're not really producing anything for it. Like, we have no evidence of their other productions at all, really, except for, you know, some cameramen following them around at the Invictus Games and in New York last year. And so my question becomes, what in the world do they do all day? They obviously have this huge house, a house like that has a lot of maintenance and upkeep attached to it. However, this is mostly done by, you know, people, Harry and Meghan, I'm sure, hired to do that. So it's like, what do they do? Well, the answer is, I'm not sure, but I kind of have somewhat of an inkling. And kind of what made me think of doing this video was that there was a, a Great Britain news article talking about how Meghan is now kind of considered, I think some somewhat of a hint, hint, nudge, nudge, eye roll, that Meghan is the princess of Montecito. But it really sounds like her and Harry live an exceptionally isolated existence there. And that most people kind of sort of think of them as a bit of a joke. So if you don't know, California, obviously it's a huge state. Uh, but obviously, you know, in the south, you know, you have San Diego, then going up north, you have LA, and then, you know, go even north further than that, and you have Santa Barbara and Malibu. And so that's kind of the area Harry and Meghan are in in Montecito, which is kind of right by Santa Barbara. And so down that corridor, obviously, you have immense wealth, also immense traffic. If you've ever driven around California in that area, it's just a nightmare to get from point A to point B. But Montecito is actually an incredibly small community and people know each other pretty well. Obviously it's a community of immense affluence. I first became aware of Montecito when the big news broke that Oprah Winfrey had just walked up to a house and go, I want to buy this and bought it for $50 million. And that was like a huge number at the time. This was like the early 2000s. And so that was the first time I kind of heard about this Montecito area. Uh, I have some connections to California. And so I know quite a bit about kind of, you know, kind of the geography and stuff of that, you know, mostly more of the South really. But I was just kind of surprised. I was like, where is this place? I was thinking it was further North, but it's really closer to Santa Barbara. And it's, you know, a com small community, but has a lot of very, very wealthy people in it. And when Harry and Meghan first decided to settle there, my first initial thought was, okay, I really think you guys should have gone for a three to $5 million house range rather than like $15 million. Because, you know, at this point, Harry only has, only has an inheritance of 30 million. I'm sure Meghan, whatever money she had, you know, she supposedly came into the marriage with $5 million as her net worth. I would classify it as lower than that. So, I mean, they honestly, you know, buying a house that's half of your inheritance when you don't have necessarily guaranteed money coming in is kind of a huge risk. So, you know, it, it would be interesting to see how, you know, well, Harry and Meghan are able to keep up on the upkeep of that house in addition to security and probably going to Hermes and Chanel and Dior all the time because I think that's what Meghan Markle spends most of her money on. But so they bought this house and I was like, ah, that's a lot of money for you guys to spend. And then it's like, okay, well, what are you guys going to do in Montecito? Because I thought you guys wanted to be Hollywood producers. And most of that pro those production deals happen in LA. And if you've never been to California and experienced California traffic, it's another beast. Now, I know because of the pandemic for a while, the, the traffic had lessened, but I think it's increased and they're gonna have the Olympics there in a couple of years. 
I don't know how they're gonna do it. Because, so I actually went to LA. I was actually in kind of downtown, it was more Hollywood area. So there's a lot of little um, enclaves throughout Cal you know, Los Angeles County and everything, a lot of different neighborhoods. So there's kind of downtown LA, there's you know, the Hollywood area I was in, there was Belleberry Hills, there was Homebly Hills, there was you know, the Valley, like so many different, like Orange County and that area and Anaheim and Santa Ana, like there's just so many areas of California. But I was kind of in you know, um, the Hollywood area, kind of close to the Grove, which is kind of a famous shopping center. And I went there for a conference and I decided because I knew Los Angeles count, like the, the traffic in LA is an absolute nightmare. So I chose a location that was probably not in the best part of town and it really wasn't, but it was close enough to the venue where we were having this training at, which was not the best part of town either. It was kind of a terrible location that was gonna be easy to drive there. It would only take me 10 or 15 minutes instead of like an hour and a half. And I know other people got up for this training that I think maybe started at nine, got up at like, you know, five o'clock in the morning and they didn't live, you know, probably they live like 30 miles away, but they had to get on the, on the, the, the roads by an hour and a half before just to be in hopes of making it in. And so just to give you an example, so I was in a Hollywood area, kind of close to the Grom's Chinese theater. And I decided one evening, okay, after my training is done, which ended at five, again, this was a bad idea. I was going to go to Griffith um, Observatory in the park because they film a lot of TV shows there. And honestly, I hadn't never been. I've been to a lot of places in LA, but I was like, oh, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I got on the road. I went at the most, probably two miles, and I was in traffic for 45 minutes. I gave up and I, I turned around and I went back. And one day I had a free day, so I actually went down and visited a friend in um, San Luis Obispo and I got, no, San Juan Capistrano, sorry. So I went down there and then I hit Disney, I had lunch in downtown Disney and then I kind of went back up and I was stuck in traffic for like two hours. Like the traffic is intense. If you've never lived in California, it's unlike, I mean, I'm sure there's other places that compare, but really in the United States, there's nothing like California traffic. It is a nightmare, the highways are massive, you know, you get stuck in places all these sorts of things. And there's certain parts of the highway that you don't get off on. Like I was driving with my dad once and I really had to go to the bathroom and he's like, and we were like over East LA and he's like, no, we're not stopping. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we'll try to make it. I made it thankfully. But anyway, so Harry and Megan are very much kind of isolated in Montecito. It would probably take them a good, on a tra like during traffic, it would probably take them an hour and a half, two hours to get down to LA. If not traffic, maybe an hour or so. But again, so I wondered, I was like, why are they in Montecito? Because if like they're trying to make this Hollywood thing work, they kind of need to be close to the studios. Now granted, you can, a lot of people do live in Montecito, like Ellen DeGeneres and stuff. But I think when they're in town, like unless they have helicopters flying them over between places all the time, obviously Kobe Bryant did that and that ended in a huge tragedy. So there is some risk in that. And obviously the Kardashians take jets like, you know, for five minutes <laughs> to again, avoid the traffic. So I always thought Montecito was a little bit of an odd choice. Cause if you're trying to make it in Hollywood, I would think you would just want to be a bit closer. And although the homes are tighter, they're also, you know, there's a lot of security and it's just kind of, you know, easier to get from point A to point B. And apparently Harry admit like Megan still continues to go to LA a lot. She goes and walks her dogs and she goes and apparently just rides around. I remember reading that in, in Great Britain News going, so who's watching the kids while she's driving around? I mean, it's just weird. And Harry, you know, we do have that one picture of him kind of biking around places like, but we don't see them that much out and about. And so almost my question is, do, do they ever go out? Like, like, are they just in their home all the time? I mean, it's clear that their kids are in the home by themselves constantly. I mean, that's epically clear that the kids don't really seem to go anywhere. And I mean, maybe they go with their nannies or something, but it's like, but you, do you guys do anything as a family? So it really seems like in a way they have isolated themselves in this mansion and they're almost more cut off than they would be in London. Catherine and William, I think for the most part, try to live as normal a life as possible. Like their kids go out and get ice cream. We have pictures of that. We had their, you know, their kids go, you know, to birthday parties, obviously their security there and those sorts of things, but they really try, I think, to get the kids out and about and we see the kids a lot with them. 
But, you know, Harry and Meghan, it's like, we have one paparazzi stroll with Archie. We also saw him recently at the 4th of July. Other than that, we really haven't seen the kid. A little bit, obviously, we got a picture of her in, for her birthday, but we haven't, we didn't even see her in Wyoming with her family. So it's like, well, who's with Lilibet? Is she with a nanny somewhere? And so I think it raises a huge amount of questions of, what do they do and what do they do with the kids? I mean, I feel genuinely sorry for the kids. Imagine, you know, that I don't think they leave that much. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting is that apparently, again, I think because of the traffic issue, because again, Harry and Meghan are not that bright. So they chose a place that's flashy and, you know, exudes opulence and wealth. However, apparently Megan still wants to hobnob around LA. So there was this little tidbit, which I thought was hysterical, that apparently she only really wants to have meetings in very posh hotels. So I can imagine this. She rents out all of the conference rooms at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And I bet you it's her and somebody else. And there's like 12 chairs in between. And they're, they're sitting at opposite ends of the table. And um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if any of that's true, but that's what I picture in my mind. It's like, so you rent out these huge conference rooms to do what exactly? Because here's the thing. Harry and Meghan, we've been told, are going to be doing this reality television series. I mean, they say it's a docuseries. Really, it's reality TV. So they're supposedly capturing their lives, but are they, are they really? And if they live in their house all the time, if that's, you know, they don't seem to do that much then kind of what's going on? And they seem to also do a lot of things separately. So Harry goes and has lunch by himself. And of course, he has to rent out the whole, you know, whole room. It's like nobody can be close to them. Megan goes out to lunch and she has kind of a separate area. And so my question is as well is there's a lot of stories seemingly that the two of them, in addition to not leaving the house very much, when they do, they do it by themselves. They are not going out to eat together all that much. They seem to be doing a lot of things separately. Again, in this Great Britain News article, and you can take it with a pinch of salt if you want to, but you know, it seemed like Megan was doing things, a lot of things by herself, taking her dogs hiking, going on trails. It's like, well, where's Harry? Where's the kids? Do they, do they just sit in that house all day? I mean, it's a beautiful house. I'm sure there's lots to do, but there's, you know, only so much you can, you know, you need to get out more. <laughs> and they're not making, I don't think, end roads in Montecito either. And I think that's a huge thing that they need to do just for their kids' well-being, their well-being, because they can only seem to have certain people around them and their kids. There are people who always benefit them. So Catherine, sorry, so Megan and Harry were seen going to lunch at one point with um, David Foster and his wife, Kate, and I can't remember her last name. And she was on, or maybe it was Rachel. She, anyways, she was on this show Smash. She was on American Idol. She has a really great singing voice. And she is like 35 years younger than him. Mm. And so her and um, Megan apparently went to school together. And so this was the man as well that Harry said was like his father. And I was like, well, dude, you have a father. You actually have a real father, and but he's just not, you know, giving you a carte blanche. He, you know, your father's trying to lead you. This guy's going to say whatever he wants to make you happy. They're two different things. So they do go out to lunch with people from time to time, but most of the reports I get is that Harry's alone and Megan's alone. So it's like, is there, you know, I would guess to a certain extent, it just doesn't even seem like they spend all that much time together outside the house. Now this could be maybe a security issue, something like that, but I really think at the same time, it just seems like Harry and Meghan really want to create this facade that they are this very exclusive, this very wealthy, this very, you know, opulent, you know, private couple that can't, you know, the riffraff, the, the, you know, the regular citizens just can't see them, can't interact with them. And, you know, that we get that feeling as well. Obviously, Tom Bauer kind of demonstrated that throughout as Megan's, you know, kind of as she saw her career blooming, she became both more and more controlling and also more and more, you know, thinking she was Nicole Kidman. 
But here's the real thing. Real celebrities just kind of go out to eat lunch like everybody else. You will see them in paparazzi pictures and they're seemingly to eat lunch with a lot of other people there. They go shopping when there are a lot of other people there. Now, granted, I don't think the paparazzi culture is as aggressive as it was in the early 2000s. And we just got kind of a ton of pictures. You know, photographers would hang around the Ivy. I actually went to the Ivy for lunch once because again, I was super into celebrities, really, really wanted to see somebody at the Ivy. Of course, there was nobody at the Ivy when I was there. But I think Harry and Meghan just seem to want to display that they are exclusive. And But yeah, I think it's kind of backfiring because people call her the Princess of Montecito, but it's more of like, uh, you know, see that crazy lady over there who thinks she's special? Yeah. So I think it does Harry and Meghan no favors to really be making no inroads in the communities that they live in. And apparently we've heard as well is that they may even want to relocate to Bel Air and have been considering renting a home there. Again, they, they you know run the risk of having a smaller plot of land because there's more land in Montecito than there is mostly in kind of the LA area. Like the biggest house in terms of, I think, most of kind of LA County, or at least in that kind of Hollywood area that we know of is like the Playboy Mansion, which has been, you know, was purchased and is undergoing massive renovations because it has like two plots in Homely Hills. So it's like a huge piece of land in Los Angeles County, considering all, you know, the other homes, if you've ever been there. So I feel like I'm describing a lot, but maybe you don't care. But even celebrities, like sometimes their houses are very close to other homes. And that's because, again, there's just not that much space. And so basically, you know, the house is quite big. Everything's very opulent, but it's a very small plot of land. Well, Harry and Meghan, of course, have to have 24 hour security. I get some of that, but I think some of it's overblown as well. And so they really need, you know, I don't think they'll find that same place. And you know, are they gonna rent like a $20 million mansion or something like that? Because Harry and Meghan, again, I think are very, very attuned to this idea that they are these super exclusive celebrities and ergo need all these all these things that they, I don't think really applies to them. So anyways, just looking at all this, considering this, I just wonder if Harry really kind of realizes that he's really just, ex, you know, exchanged one palace prison that because he kind of almost implies that you know being a royal it's you know the worst sentence in the world and it's awful and he's just really kind of exchanged it for Montecito so you know they just don't go out much they have a very exclusive round of friends that Megan has all chosen and he goes out and he like drives like wiener cars around the road that was one of the reports is that he ran into a wiener car and just thought that was fun and they let him drive it for a little bit and so you know, yes, he has a bit more freedom, but really in a way, the pressure is worse because guess what he has to do? Him and Megan, they have to produce something. They have to make money. And you know how you make money? You make stuff. You make a, you have a talent, you have a product that you can sell. Right now, Harry and Meghan don't have a product. So they've secured these two deals with Netflix and Spotify. The Spotify, Meghan is supposed to come out with a new series this summer. Well, it's July, late July when I'm filming this, perhaps maybe they'll, we'll finally hear an announcement in August, but we have no announcement of when that's airing. You know, their Netflix thing, they've been filming that for almost a year now because we first saw the cameras in September in New York last year. And so where is this Netflix documentary series or this reality TV series? You should have more than that. And so I think the pressure here in LA is worse because you have to actually make money. You actually have to produce something. And honestly, I don't think Harry has the acumen for that. And Megan, I don't think has the follow through. So you have this combination, I'm sure, of things getting quite heated in that house because they're under a lot of pressure. That mortgage is incredibly expensive. The upkeep on the house is incredibly expensive. And they have this 24 hour security that they have to pay for. They're involved in all these needless lawsuits, including asking for their security back, which they've already wasted a hundred thousand pounds of the taxpayer's money in the UK over this court case. When I think that kind of the real um, impetus for this is that they need that internationally protected person status back so they can demand security from like the state of California and my government because I don't think they're having a hard time funding it themselves. And so really they exchange the prison of the monarchy where, you know, yes, you are kind of constrained in what you can do because you are the spare, but you know, you have most of your life covered. You have a staff, a staff team that's dedicated to helping you to Montecito where you have this 
magnificent home, but you have to do all the upkeep for it. You have a wife that spends like a sailor on leave and you have all these contractual obligations that you have to meet. And I think it's kind of hitting them maybe that it might not be possible that this kind of thing that seemed great at first has become really more of a prison than they even left. Well guys, let me know what you think about this video. I wasn't sure if I quite captured it exactly like I wanted to, but I just think it's really, really interesting because I think there's a lot of pressure on the two of them and I just don't know if they can, if they can pull this off. I wouldn't be surprised if they do have to downsize their home at some point, but you know, it remains to be seen. Maybe this is really freedom, but honestly, when I see Harry, I don't see freedom. I see a prisoner just in a different jumpsuit. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to tune in soon. And I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Bye.